Well, Merry Christmas 2021. I'm at home with a cold, doing okay, but uh, I'm gonna show you a little bit of work I did. Okay, so one thing I wanna show is that this thing is wet in here, guys. Like, it is like dripping water, man. And it's not just, doesn't seem like it's just from leaking T-tops, but, um, you know, this thing was kinda starting to mold up on me, actually, so I'm making it a big priority to get this thing into the garage. But that's gonna take a lot of reorganization in the garage because the space is kinda limited. But, uh, it's a sweet car. The primary thing that was keeping me from driving this thing at all, so it sat for a little bit, was the oil leaks. I do not like cars that leak oil like that. I mean, that was an insane amount of oil. So you're gonna see what I did to resolve that. And then I did the wheel bearing on the other side, was hoping to make this thing drive a little bit better, and it didn't really do that. So the thing still, you know, shoots to the left and definitely needs tie rods. And I'm gonna do the front ball joints. I still haven't done any coilovers or anything like that, or struts, but uh, that probably won't have anything to do with the one ring. I got one of the tabs here and the very first little uh, riser welded on, but to uh, get the other ones at the exact same height as this so that when it sits on the press, it's uh, this thing is uh, that the surface is parallel with the surface of the press so this thing comes out straight. I need to get two more of these things. So you can see this level right here on the hub is perfectly level and when I turn it 90 degrees, it stays level. So what I know is that this hub is uh, at a perfect level. So to actually get this thing level, I had to put this into the jack and I could level it this way, but it was down in this direction. So I used this piece of wood with a jack up under the vise, and this got it right there so that this thing is perfectly level. So now these things should all be at the same height. Gotta love the Northwest. All right, cut that from an old hub that I wasn't gonna use. It was like a hub from my trailer. And this is gonna be used to press the wheel bearing in and out. It's pretty sweet, it's like the perfect diameter. I'll have to put something right here, kind of like that maybe to uh, actually press it through. It's hard to tell on the camera, man, but this is a perfect fit. This was really cool. Uh, and then it's cool I'm making a nice tool for this to press bearings in and out because right now I'm just trying to get the bearing fixed on this uh, on this axle so that I can drive the car. You saw how bad it was. Uh, but I'm gonna need these jigs because when I actually swap to the E153 transmission, that beefy transmission, I need to change the axles and the spline type in these hubs is different. So it's a different spline type between the NA car and the turbo car. So it's gonna get a bit, little bit bigger spline in here. I think what's not cool about this tool is it might only work for the right hand side. I think if I took the left hand spindle and set it on here, uh, might not work, but we'll see. Yeah, I thought I'd have to uh, get an adapter or something to get a different throttle body on this engine. On the K24, it came with a uh, drive-by wire and I was kind of thinking about taking this thing apart and like getting the guts out of here and putting them a, putting like a crank on it myself and making it a manual throttle body. But I found this, this guy pretty cheap on Amazon. It's got a little bit different pinout for the uh, TPS. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. Yeah, hopefully that piece won't get stuck part way down. No. All right, I'm gonna try putting some heat into this thing. What I have to do is take off this uh, this part of the race here. This part of the bearing stayed on when we popped it out. Really common for that to happen, I guess. But you know, that's a tight fit on there. So I'm gonna try to heat this ring that part of the bearing up. Hopefully it expands, pry it up. Let's we'll see how it goes. Yeah, heating and uh, using that chisel is not working out too good. So I'm gonna try to cut this thing off.
a couple of little gouges but nothing major this sits inside the bearing it's fully supported we're not gonna get any cracks there it's gonna hold together even if it did crack prefer you know so this thing's safe Exactly. Of course, we let leave the fucking dust shield off. <laughs> no, always. <laughs> That's supposed to go right between here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, these uh, hubs are getting upgraded when I get the bigger splines for the new tranny. So I guess until then, I'm going to have some dusty uh, suspension. Yeah, we got more rain, more shitty weather, but I'm going to put this thing back together. Maybe go out and do a donut. I don't know. We'll see. Got it all back together, no dust plate, because I'm a dumbass, but uh, I'm gonna put the cotter key in here, put the wheel on, let's go for a ride. So we saw that we had to get a new throttle body because it was drive by wire. Uh, one of the other things I have to do before I can run this motor, actually I don't really have to do it, but uh, there's the power steering pump, and on the MR2, the power steering is electric, and I do not need this at all. So this is a power steering pump delete kit, got it from eBay for like 60 bucks. And uh, so I'll pull this pump off and put this in its place. Yeah, that was very simple. Just a couple bolts and gets the pump out of there. All right, well, that doesn't look right. That does not line up with the rest of them. Dang it! Look how tight this is now. Nothing. Not it. Not doesn't budge at all. have been labeled the mega squirt is hooked up right there and the scope is set to look at both cam signals so I'm not gonna look at the crank signal right now that that's my difference that's how you tell your cam position this is sick this is getting sketchier and sketchier as it goes this is 
<laughs> this will be fun. 